Welcome to week nine of Algebra 1A with Mrs. Weibark. This week we are starting a new unit. We will be studying systems of equations. And in this first part, we will be discussing the solutions to systems of equations and graphing methods. We're going to get started by talking about the solutions to systems of equations. We often encounter systems of linear equations in real life situations all the time. We encounter them in daily life and often we don't even think about them as systems. We simply think that we are problem solving. However, they're used formally in math and science, engineering, business, accounting, and a whole host of other professional areas on a regular basis. For example, in business, the point at which income equals expenses is called the break-even point. When starting a business, people want to know the point at which their income equals their expenses because that's the point where they start to make a profit. So if we look at this graph above, on the x-axis we have the number of sales units. So this could be the number of items produced or sold by a company. And on the y-axis we have the dollar amounts. Looking at this blue line, that gives us our total revenue or how much income is made. It tells us how much money is made given any number of sales units that are produced. This dashed red line represents costs. So it tells us what is the cost in dollars of producing a given number of sales units. So if we look specifically where this blue line representing revenue intersects this red line representing costs, we can identify what is called the break-even point. At this break-even point, we can find out how many units of a product we have to make or sell in order for our revenue and cost to be equal. If as a business we produce less than that break-even point, we will be losing money. That's considered a loss. However, if we are able to produce or sell more than the amount indicated by the break-even point, then we are now generating a profit. There are several definitions with which we need to be familiar. A system of equations is a set of two or more equations that use the same variables. The solution to a system of equations is an ordered pair that makes each equation true. And the point of intersection is the solution when graphing a system of equations. In this first example, we are given an ordered pair and asked whether or not it is a solution. So in this example, we are asked, is the point 2, 3 a solution to the system containing the two equations y equals 2x minus 1 and 3x plus 4y equals 18? There are three steps to answer this question. In step one, I'm going to plug the ordered pair into the first equation, which is y equals 2x minus 1. So I will substitute 3 for y, 2 for x. I get 3 equals 2 times 2 minus 1, which simplifies to 3 equals 3, and sure enough, it's true. In step two, I'm plugging the same point into the second equation, 3x plus 4y equals 18. So again, I substitute 2 for x, 3 for y, I get 6 plus 12 equals 18, and sure enough, 18 does equal 18. That's true. So in step 3, I conclude that yes, this is a solution. It's a solution because this point, 2, 3, makes both of these equations true. This is what page 1 of your notes should look like when completed. Please take a moment to stop and fill in any gaps that you may have. In example 2, we are asked, is the ordered pair 4, 1 a solution to the system y equals 5x minus 19 and y equals 2x plus 11? So once again, my first step is to plug the ordered pair into the first equation. So I'm going to substitute 4 for x and 1 for y. I get 1 equals 5 times 4, which is 20, minus 19, and yes, 1 does equal 1, so that is true. I then, in step 2, plug in the point 4, 1 to the second equation, y equals 2x plus 11. When I simplify, 
or substitute and then simplify, I get 1 equals 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 11. 8 plus 11 is 19, though, and 1 does not equal 19. That is false. So in step 3, I conclude that no, it is not a solution. You may notice that one of the equations was made true by the ordered pair. However, that is not good enough. For 4, 1 to be a solution to the system, both equations have to be made true. When solving systems of linear equations, there are three possible types of solutions. This applies specifically to linear equations. Other types of systems of equations may have other answers, but we're specifically looking at linear in this unit. So the first situation is when there is exactly one solution. That's what occurred in the first few examples that we have already looked at. You could also have a situation in which there are infinite solutions or no solutions at all. And in this unit, we will be learning three different methods for solving systems of linear equations. They are graphing, substitution, and elimination. And this is how page two of your notes should look when completed. We will now be taking a look at the methods of graphing in order to solve systems of linear equations. So as a reminder, a system of linear equations is a set of two or more equations with the same variables. The solution of a system in X and Y is any ordered pair X, Y that makes both equations true. This example is not in your notes, but I'd like you to take a moment to listen and follow along. In this example, I'm given the system of equations y equals 2 thirds x plus 2 and y equals 2x minus 6. This is two equations using the same two variables. That makes it a system. If I graph the first equation, I get this blue line here representing y equals 2 thirds x plus 2. The second equation, y equals 2x minus 6, generates this brown line. If I look at the point where these two lines intersect, it is the point 6, 6. So this point of intersection 6, 6 is the solution to the system of equations. This might seem a bit complicated and lengthy at first, but if you can graph a straight line, then you can solve systems of equations graphically. So be patient, it's not as hard as it may seem. In example three, we are going to solve a system of equations by graphing. There are two steps to complete this process. In the first step, you have to graph both equations. And in the second step, we'll find the point of intersection because that's the solution. So in example three, I am given two equations, 4x minus 6y equals 12, and 2x plus 2y equals 6. You can graph the equations using any methods that you prefer. I'm going to do the first one by changing it to slope intercept just for practice. So if I start with 4x minus 6y equals 12, I would subtract 4y from both sides in order to get the y term by itself. This gives me negative 6y equals negative 4x plus 12. To isolate the y, I divide all three terms by negative 6. This yields the equation y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. So I now know that this equation has a slope of 2 thirds and a y-intercept of negative 2. I'm going to use this information to graph the line in just a moment. My second equation, 2x plus 2y equals 6, I'm going to keep that one in standard form, so I'm going to find the x and y-intercepts. To find the x-intercept, I'll let y equal 0. This will yield 2x equals 6, because 2 times 0 is 0, and my y term disappears. And this gives me x equals 3. So I have the x-intercept of 3 comma 0. To find the y-intercept, I'll let x equal 0, so 2 times 0 is 0, and I am left with 2y equals 6, which means y equals 3. So I have a y-intercept of 0, 3. Now that I have rearranged these equations or find, found the x and y intercepts, I can graph them. y equals 2 thirds x minus 2 has a y intercept of negative 2. It has a slope that's rise 2, run 3, 
and I get this nice dark blue line here representing that equation. For my second equation, I chose to find the intercepts. And the y-intercept was 0, 3, and the x-intercept was 3, 0. So when I graph these points and draw a line, I get this dark teal line. So my second step is to find the point of intersection. And these two lines intersect right here at the point 3, 0. Since 3, 0 is the point of intersection, it is the solution. This means that I could take the point 3, 0, substitute it into either equation, and it would make both of them true. This is what page 3 of your notes should look like when completed. We're going to do one more example like this. In example 4, I'm going to use a graph to solve the system of equations including x plus y equals 5 and y equals 2x minus 1. Remember, the first step is to graph both equations. Since x plus y equals 5 is a very simple equation in standard form, I'm going to use the intercepts. Because if I let y be 0, I'm left with x equals 5. That gives me the x-intercept 5, 0. And if I let x be 0, I'm left with y equals 5, which gives me the y-intercept 0, 5. So I could plot those points 0, 5 and 5, 0 and connect them with this line. My second equation is already written in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to use the slope-intercept method. My y-intercept is negative 1, which would be here on my graph, and my slope is 2, which gives me a rise of 2 and a run of 1, and I can generate this upward sloping line. So when I graph these two equations, I get a graph that looks like this. You might notice this graph looks not quite as neat and colorful as the previous graphs. However, I've included it because we will be using graphing calculators in class. And when you generate a graph using a graphing calculator, this is what it looks like. So it's good to become familiar with them. I've now completed step one and graphed both equations. So step two is to locate the point where the lines intersect, which is right here at the point two, three. Sometimes on a graph, whether you use a graphing calculator or you do it by hand, can be a little bit tricky to tell exactly what the coordinates are. The graphing calculator can help you out with that. When graphing by hand, it's always a good idea to take what appears to be the solution, in this case 2, 3, and to plug it back into both equations just to be sure it works. So if I take my first equation, x plus y, and I plug in 2 for x, 3 for y, sure enough, it equals 5, which is true. And my second equation, y equals 2x minus 1, when I substitute 2 for x and 3 for y, I do indeed get a true equation. So yes, 2, 3 is the solution to this system of equations. And this is what your completed page 4 of notes should look like. If any information is missing, including checking the solution, please take a moment to fill in the gaps. Earlier in this presentation, we mentioned that there were three possible types of solutions to systems of linear equations. And we are going to review those and use page 5 of your notes. In this first example, if I graph the equation x plus 2y equals 7, it generates this blue line right here. And if I graph y equals x minus 4, I generate this red line. And as you can see, these two lines intersect at exactly one point. So if you have two lines that intersect, there is one solution, exactly one solution. So keep in mind, intersecting lines yield one solution. In example 6, I am given two equations, and when I graph y equals 3x plus 5, I can use my y-intercept of 5. My slope is 3, so I can do rise 3 over 1 and generate this red line. If I graph this second equation, I could do this either by converting it to slope-intercept, or I could also use the standard form 
and find the x and y intercepts, but what I'll find here is that I actually get the exact same line. So if you graph two equations and the lines turn out to be the same, there are infinitely many solutions. What that means is one line is laid right on top of the other line, if you want to think of it that way. They are the same line. So every single point on this red line is a, is a solution. So there are infinitely many solutions. And in example seven, we have yet a different situation. If I graph y equals 2x plus 7, my y-intercept is 7, so I start at 7. My slope is 2, so I rise 2 and run 1, and I generate this nice blue line. My second equation is y equals 2x plus 3. So this time my y-intercept is 3, and again my slope is rise 2, run 1. So what actually happens is I get lines that are parallel. So therefore there are no solutions because parallel lines never intersect. You might have noticed just from the equation before you even graphed it that the slopes were the same. And when the slopes are the same, you will always get parallel lines. So I could have told even before I graphed it that there would be no solutions because these lines were going to be parallel. And this is what the last page, page five of your notes, should look like when completed. Thank you for watching this Wybark production.